What is going on, everyone, and welcome to Cart 63. My name is Ben, right up front to allow you to know who is speaking to you. Uh, I, it's not really a joke anymore of me <laughs> doing that. I just, I don't know what other sequence of words to say after that, but uh, I'm kind of taking advantage of some decent weather here in New York, Nike. We, uh, it started to trail off and get pretty cold, and then this whole week looks like it's going to be pretty decent weather. So if I can get out here to the barn, I'm going to try and record some videos kind of in batches in order to, uh, you know, get them in my phone, get them uploaded, whatever I got to do, because, uh, you know, uh, old man winter is a coming. I am, uh, I'm about two hours south of Canada, which means that I am almost in the really cold part of the yeah world. <laughs> it's it's going to get miserable here. I, I have a plan B for when it gets super cold. I think I can use my shop uh, where I work every day to, to still do video so I don't have to freeze my, my tuchus off. But anyway, uh, this subject is, is something that I thought could be useful. This is more for the high-powered guys the high-powered carts, UAS, run what you brung, uh, maybe even some Yamaha action. I, maybe it's useful in in clone and uh, in Predator if it's a track that you're that you lift at. Uh, you know, this this really isn't. Maybe it is. I, I shouldn't just you know cor put their cornhole. Jeez, put everything into this segment and that segment. This could be useful for anybody. I'll put it that way. It is mostly used. <laughs> And high horsepower applications, UAS, run what you brung. There, that, that sounds a little better, doesn't it? All right, uh, we're going to talk about trail braking. Now, trail braking is something that was, uh, it was a real hot topic in uh, UAS way, way back, I don't know, it, say 10 years ago, when we were on a bunch of the smaller engines, uh, the, the 125 two-strokes, the 131s, you know, just smaller displacement stuff. It was a way of, I've always thought, of keeping momentum up. So down south, more so than up north here, you you can run it up north, uh, but down south, I think it's, it's utilized a little bit better. So when you drive into the corner, you're, you're, you're standing on the gas for even longer than you're, you're comfortable doing, but what you're doing is applying the brake at the same time. So you're, say your lift point is, you know, I don't know, 30, you know, 20, 30 feet, you know, coming in the corner. I don't know. I'm picking a distance. That's, that may not make any sense. Anyway, your normal lift point would be 20 feet. Well, you're no longer, your, your lift point is going to be 10 feet with trail braking. So you're gonna stay in it even longer. You're gonna be applying the brake while you're still open, keeping that momentum up just slightly well in the cart, allowing the cart to take it set. Then you're gonna take your foot off the brake and maybe off the gas, you're gonna get back into it and then rifle off the turn. It's a way to get into the corner even hotter than you would had you uh, you know, lifted and, and did like you normally do. Now, up front, I am not a trail break kind of person. I have trail trail broken. Trail <laughs> I've I've trail braked before. Uh it's not my driving style, but honestly, after the Grand Nationals, I know that some of the guys there and probably a lot of the fast guys, you know, I was I was a couple, you know, it I don't even know. I won't say I was half a second off the pace, but two, three, four tenths of a second off of what the leaders were is enough for me to realize that maybe down south, especially in, in my opinion, um, their trail breaking and if they're doing so is where I'm losing that, where they're able to drive into the corner even harder. Now, you can watch some of my videos, especially the one from the Grand Nationals. I think I have phenomenal shoot speed. Now, I, that's where I thought my strength was, but... I wasn't close enough to the leaders to realize how far or how deep they were actually driving it in. You know, so I, I'm more of a float kind of guy. So I left early. I let the cart just roll free. I get pointed, I, I take a break, and then, you know, wide back open. Now, I don't know if you would consider this trail breaking, but as I am coming off the corner, I have, you know, known myself to, so... Uh, being a true stroke, I stand on it wide, wide open. I'm coming out of the corner and I can feel the rear end, you know, losing a little bit of grip. Well, 
maybe it's trail breaking, not really trail, is it's pre-breaking. I'm using the 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 brake to mediate the the amount of rear spin because uh, you know the brakes on the rear of the cart. It's on the rear axle, so I'm using the brake to calm the rear end. I can stand wide open. I'm keeping my RPMs up. I'm keeping the, the engine in the meat of the power, but I'm using that brake to, to mediate how much grip you know I'm willing to give up on the rear. If it, it, do, do you understand where I'm going with this? All right, so uh, trail braking, just a, another element of driving, probably something I should be doing. Uh, if, if it is, in fact, why... You know, I qualified, what, 14th um, at the Grand Nationals. If that was the reason I did that, I don't know. Because in 2019, I was down to Jasper. And I mean, that's that's really high grip. And I, I don't trail break. And I didn't trail break back then. And I qualified 7th there. So, but it's still off the pace of the leader. So, it's may, maybe it's something I should be looking into. You know, something that, you know, maybe you can, you can rattle around in your brain. Hey, is there a way to go even faster? I mean... Obviously, you know, carts in front of you would, would <laughs> you know, how hard you can actually drive into the corner if there's people in front of you that, that may, you know, change whether or not you're able to trail break or not. But I, I suppose in in a capacity of qualifying down south or, or something like that, that you would want to do that. You want to keep the RPMs up in the engine. You want to keep it in the meat of the power where, where it really likes it. You know, if you have to lug the motor, you're, you're killing speed. You're, you're, you're taking longer to get the motor back up where it's happiest running, you know, at optimal uh, RPMs. This is all the theory that I have here. So uh, hopefully I explained that a little bit to you. And uh, I just thought it was a, ni a nifty topic to talk about, not only for the UAS people, but, you know, maybe it's something that maybe, uh, you know, clone or predator people can do. If it's something that even, you know, standing wide open, coming into the corner, if you're just dancing on that brake a little bit, you know, keeping the, just, just woeing the cart enough that you're going to make the turn, but keeping the RPMs up on it, maybe, maybe it's something you can use. So, uh, that is the thought for today. All right, guys, I really appreciate you coming by. If you didn't mind hitting a like on the video, possibly subscribing to the channel, that would be fantastic. Uh, I really do appreciate every single one of you that ever watch my videos and, uh, I guess I'll see you guys next week. Later.